right, in this video, we're going to be looking at how to do a lookup from one object into another and how to pull in some of that information and even create a formula field to kind of get access to that information and make a decision on some process builders if we want to or any other automation as we go through. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create two objects in this. And so the first object, let's go ahead and create it. This first object that we're going to do is going to be our main object. So I'm just going to write main and then for the object name, we're going to go ahead and add our prefix. Let's scroll down for the record name. We want main. We want to change it to an auto number. There we go. We'll start at number one. It's good practice. Allow reports, allow activities, allow search, and we're going to do launch new custom tab. All right, so we're going to choose box. And the idea reason for this is that we're just kind of thinking this is a box and we're going to have multiple things that we can put inside this box, multiple things uh, outside of it. That we're going to be reaching into. So here, we're going to put default on for everybody. Sounds good. We don't want to include the tab anywhere. Uh, we'll leave the bottom one checked. We've created that one. We're going to create some fields for it now. So on the fields, let's go ahead and add. We're going to go ahead and add a number. This is going to be the number that comes in. So for an example, like we're bringing in a number, a value that they're bringing in. So we're going to say input value. Uh, we'll do 10 and 2. That's going to be our same response all the way through. So length of 10 decimal spaces of 2. We're going to click Next. Visible. All the way down Next. And we're going to save. So that's going to be the only bit of information we're going to have so far. We're going to make another object, and then we'll come back and add more to this one. So that was our main. Let's make a new object. We're going to call this secondary. Secondary name, we do want it to be text, so we're going to leave that alone. Let's go ahead and change this to just name. Allow search. And we want to launch. It's going to launch a new tab for us. The other one was a box. This one's going to be books. Um, just kind of helps with the metaphor of there's a lot of books that can go inside of here. And um, we're just going to select one of them. Click on the tab style. I'm going to click on books. And next. Yep, default on. That's good. Next. Take off that. Should only be there. And save. All right. Now for here, we're going to add some fields. Okay, since the name is going to be the name, it's going to have a text field there, so we don't have to worry about a name for it. So we're going to have that already. So we're going to create two new values, two new numbers. So we're going to come down here, select a number. This one's going to be the lower value. Ten and two. We're going to do next. Visible. Next. Save and new. I'll click next. Upper value. Ten and two. All right, we're changing those numbers. And that's it. Click Next. Visible to everybody. And Next. And Save. All right, so those are the only ones that we're going to be creating on here. Um, so we have the lower value that we're going to put in. Um, and then we're going to have an upper value. Okay, and the idea behind this object, the secondary object, is going to be a 
you know, kind of like a, a metric or a, something that we want them to be looking at and saying, here's our, the highest value we'll accept, the lowest value we'll accept for this specific option. Um, so we've got that created there. And then, so let's go back to the other object. You can see I did some before. So we're going back to the ones that I'm doing just for the video. Oh, you will notice, forgot to put the API name. Let's go back to secondary. All right, and we're going to go ahead and put our prefix here. Let's go back to main. There we go. So that has a prefix. The other one has a prefix. And here in our fields and relationships, we're going to make some formula fields. So the first one is going to be a formula field. And click on field and relationships. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a lookup. We're going to create our lookup. So we're going to go down, do a lookup relationship. And we're going to find that object we were working on, which was secondary. And click next. Field name for that. Secondary will be fine. Yep, mains. That's good. Next. Visible. Next, and it will be on the main layout. Next, yep, and we're going to do save and new. So now we have that lookup relationship, we can pull some more information from it. So we're going to create a formula, and next. All right, so this is going to be the lower value. This is going to be a number. Two decimal places there, yep, click next. This is going to equal the secondary lower value. So it's just going to pull that information from the one that we've selected. We'll go ahead and be responsible. Click check syntax. We're good to go. Click next. Yes, we want it visible to all of those. Click next. And save and new. We're going to do the same thing for the upper value. So we're going to do formula upper value, it will be a number, two there, perfect, next, insert field, we are on the advanced tab, so you might be on the simple formula, we're going to the advanced tab, we're finding a secondary, and we want upper value, insert, being responsible, hit and check syntax, we're good to go, and click next, visible, and next, And we're going to do another one. This is going to be a formula that's a little more complicated. This is going to be a checkbox. So it's going to be a valid or invalid. So it's going to be true or false. And we're going to call this input is input value is between. Input value is between. The checkbox will say yes or no. All right, we're going to start with an and. So we're going to insert that. The first part we're going to do is add in our input value is greater than insert field low value. Okay, and we're using the ones from the specific object that we created. Right, so notice it's not referencing the other one. I'll show you what that looks like. So if we do input value, insert is less than, and then I'm going to grab the incorrect, which is going to come all the way down. I'm going to go to secondary, then I'll click on this upper value. You see how it's got that related, that information there? Well, we've already pulled that information. We want to use the most up-to-date information that we have inside the object. So we're just going to pull that directly in that way. All right. So if it is greater than the lower value or less than the upper value, then it'll be valid. We'll go ahead and check it. We're good to go. Next. Visible. Next and save. 
And that's what the fields look like over here. So this is our main object, and then we have our secondary object. We need to create an app real quick to be able to surface all this. So we're going to go to Home. We're going to go to App, App Manager. You could have also just typed in App Manager in the Quick Find box. New Lightning App. Our lookup example. Okay. Developer name, let's go ahead and be responsible and put our prefix there so we don't forget later on like we did the other one. Click next. We don't need to change any of those. We'll click next, next. And you're going to see that I had some other objects that I was working on before. I was testing this out, so we'll add that over there. And we'll do secondary. All right, those are the two that I made during this video. I'm going to grab those and make sure that everyone has access to this. All right in this scenario, we are using profiles. It is different than the other example that I did before, um, where we did permission sets giving access. So look at that if you need some reference to how to do this in with the mindset of permission sets. But this is what we're doing with profiles, make it a little bit easier. Save and finish. And now we've created that application. So if I come over here to the app launcher and I type in lookup example, let's open this in a new tab. Okay, we've got no secondaries. Let me pin the all list. There we go. Main, let's go ahead and do all. Checkbox that. There we go. So on secondaries, here we go. Let's create some. All right, I went ahead and quickly created four of them. So if I click on the tab, you'll see all four of them. Um, we don't see the difference here, so I'm just going to add in this little bit. Click on Select Fields to Display, and we want the lower value and the upper value and save and that's going to give me those values there and also organize those by value just by clicking on that that doesn't change any of the records it just sorts the way it looks in this list view so we've done that we've got that information let's go over to mains now that we have those created so let's say you had 40 of them that you need to create you would create all 40 of them with the name that you want and then come over here then I'm in mains now. If I create a new one, all right, and I come down here and I give an input value. Let's say the input value is 3.5, and we're going to go with option C. When I hit save, the record calculates, and it says 3.5 is not in between 7.5 and 9.5, so that is not checked. Okay, um, let's go ahead and create another one. Input value is going to be 6. All right, let's go save. 6 is in between 1.25 and 8.75, so that is check marked there. Let's go back to the main so you can see all of that. Notice we just have that, so we're going to edit this list view. All right, we're going to bring in I'm going to put them in kind of an order. Put value in between there, secondary. We'll say save. You can organize that how you wish. But there we go. We've got the information there. Um, so if the input value was not correct um, and we want to edit it, we can edit it here. And I can change that to 8. When I press Enter and Save, it'll update that formula field right there. So what you're looking at, what you're looking at here is you have now all of this information. And what you would do is if you wanted to, you can activate a, a, a process builder 
And what you could do is you can activate a process builder based on just this field right there. It did all the calculations for you because it pulled the information in. It checked to see if your value was in between. And then this could activate, whether it's true or false, um, could activate a process builder. Okay, so if it's true, then it'll proceed with one action. If it's false, it can proceed with another action like, you know, sending a message to come back and check that. Uh, and that can be on when this is created or when this is updated. Uh, and it'll, it'll process through that way. And so this object here has all of our different options. Um, and because this is, you know, you could say, yeah, why don't you just make this a pick list? Why aren't these just pick lists? Because they have so much other information alongside of them. Um, so we've got our lower value and we've got our upper value, and those values are specific to this option, right? And we can actually go in there and adjust these as references um, for this. And so that kind of provides that flexibility for us to be able to take that, do this in a lookup, pull this information through formulas, and then be able to activate based off of a process builder on what the value is. So I hope that was extremely helpful. Enjoy some of the other videos if you have um, some time and look at those for other ideas on how to use Salesforce.